Sicily. It's such a varied landscape. It's got so much going for it as a region. Sicily is the triangular ball on the end of the boot of Italy. The two Sicilies, um, the strange people that sort of allude to royalty and aristocratic connections still clinging to it, like the Daily Mail. You occasionally see something about the princess of the two Sicilies when she's on the beach in a bikini or something in some tax haven in the Caribbean that's probably British. The two Sicilies are this Sicily and from the shoe of the boot um, up to about Rome. The lower half of Italy is the other Sicily, administered as feudal previously together. Having avoided that trickery of the food for the captive audience customers on the boat that the nice Irish gentleman puts on for us, food that costs as much as a two-hour flight, the airlines aren't paying their carbon tax, are they? We landed in Palermo as succinctly as we could, got the hire car and off. You can drive around the city and see quite a lot of it. It's not particularly pedestrianised, but it is. Didn't bode well when I realised I'd taken a wrong turn almost straight away after doing the city circuit. Not having air conditioning in the car, we had to stop at a beach resort that was on our way to Tormina, which was our first accommodation, where the coast road veers off inland. Very nice drive by the beach. It's civilised with only uh, showers for washing salt off and come out the sea. Packed with families like Sicilian sardines. And in that entirely family environment, there's banging beach bar restaurants that are nothing but rectangular shack series of linked rectangular shack, reed, roofed, reed, balustrade, where they'd enclosed the coastal path so you couldn't actually get to the little town without going through these restaurants. Didn't fancy these restaurants just because of the clientele heavily drinking spirits along the beach side of the path and then there was eating and the, there was sort of like in tiny cramped in little booths and the medallion men smelt of sperm with their bronzed tan and rasping voice it was difficult to walk past without sort of being bullied into intimidated into eating that's just bizarre what sort of quality of food are you going to get might have just been the time of day but the actual restaurants were fairly empty and the beach was rammed I had researched places by the beach, second homes by the sea, and even on the many islands that they have decent ferries to from the towns. I wasn't really giving serious consideration to a one euro village second home, but I did want to see if they're like, if they're families or full of old people in these villages. <laughs> As you don't see people in the villages, they're sort of inside their homes, if they're there at all, I suppose they might be inhabited. They want to stay out of the sun unless they have a reason to be there to a large extent. In the shade. Villages can look like ghost towns even when they're not. If you're inside in your own little fortress, no one's gossiping about you. And you don't pass through that many villages. They are sort of remote hilltop fortress-like locations. And things are grown on the good land that definitely there. Sicily is definitely nothing like one of those rock Greek islands, but it's like that in places with the reeds. For perhaps the large majority of it, it's rather lush, almost Cotswold-like. Verdant, though inevitably brown for some of the year. You can drive country lanes at pace. You can see what's coming. Mount Etna volcano is a little bit disappointing. The, the wisp of smoke, not disappointing in that way. Just you can't see it or you don't realise what it is. From most of it, you're either too close or too far away. I was sort of thinking that you'd be it'd be dominating every view from everywhere, but far from it. A bit like how even a skyscraper disappears when you're up close to another building. Just north and east of Etna was one of my second home options that I'd researched. What was my criteria for that? Well, sea views seem to be perennial favourite. If I couldn't quite justify the cost of being a few minutes walk from the beach. Coastal path, far distant up on a hill, and tick that box. The heat of Sicily was one of the main attractions there. Um, family means that I've got every chance of getting arthritis and as a martyr and the heat helps that hugely. And while there is the... Um, an amorous aspect of no, don't touch me. It's too you're too hot. You're like a radiator. Sunshine and warmth are generally conducive to a good mood, if you not. I wanted it to be near a preferably adjacent to a reasonable watercourse because I was hoping to get some hydroelectric 24 hours a day from it. A remote hermit existence would be fine, but not too far from civilization just for practicalities. You can't grow everything that you want to do. You end up with seasonal glut. Like our accommodation that we were heading straight for, Clyde, within reach of a major tourist centre, Tormina is moneyed. 
And it's been renovated and decorated so that it's almost Disney-like in its Instagrammable picture perfect. Judging by the amphitheatre, it was in Roman times as well. What was that? More base attractions that uh, the people offered the Romans. I will also say that a lot of attractive people in Sicily. Sounds a bit daft to say. I'm not just talking about the international tourists of Tormina and their selfie-posing void of piety on the religious celebration day. I think there are so many of them. A procession a day for an extended period just so that the numbers of people can get into the small squares and streets and spread out their income for the hotels and restaurants. There are a lot of saints' days, though, aren't there? There was a huge amount of emigration from Sicily to America. I think they, the Sicilians might have just got bit encouraged to leave, got the um, ugly ones encouraged them to leave. These methods, perhaps, that Sicilians are well known for? A digression, like our hotel within easy reach of a tourist centre. But for me as a person, I've pretty much given up on Airbnb type income and its associated headaches. But a villa with a pool all to ourselves. The owners were in a separate accommodation, tucked away in the air conditioning. All we had from them was service. I will get to the main story, but what put me off the streamside sea view satellite of tourist tournament? A black rat is going out of the room when we went to look. Biggest I've ever seen. Everything likes to stay out the sun and show. I know it's ridiculous really, but I would be living in the room for some time. Renovating. It was a realisation that I had searching around the internet. It gave me scope and architectural vision in its site and location. We were off to Rococo architectural gem towns at the south. So far, it's south in Sicily and Italy that you're almost in Tunisia. There is a real smaller smuggler's island halfway between the two. Once Moorish, once Greek, Roman. Though the look of the people, the mindset as the dance tune goes, this is Africa. Play it for you, but it's so difficult to search for dance tunes. You used to be able to go into a record shop and do you know the one that goes, that's a fairly new one, no, this is Africa. But for some of the French stuff, I've been wanting to do the one that well, it sounds with a fairly sexy woman's voice, not breathless or anything. And she says something in French. A little bit like a train announcement, like a sexy train announcement. Do, 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 do. And then I always think that it goes afterwards, but I don't think it does. But if I'd have done that in the 12-inch vinyl shop, they'd know what I meant. Stream in, it's so restrictive. The art form that this podcast is, is being stifled. Rococo. Notto, near Lido on the beach, and Ola, and flanked by a couple of national park reserves. That's for naturists, not soldiers. And as a note to those swinger-type naturists, um, how any offence might be dealt with isn't really by the police, I would thought, if you're in one of those nature reserves swinging free. If you upset someone's daughter or son by scratching at the wrong time, it'd be dealt with by the Camorra. No one really care less what you're wearing or what you're not wearing. It's more like what's in the eyes, what's behind the eyes, how you carry yourself, a lingering gaze, and any lingering touch is just misguided. But I'm not saying you'd end up as reinforcement in some concrete foundations. Any of the many greedy and lazy would be spending time and effort into having you work for them intensively. All in any of their extended family firm, acquaintances of acquaintances and hunters, grandfather and their goat. Rococo architecture and design is the epitome of decadence. Breaking of the rules, the hopes that I have the game as motto upon the hill is more than just half a dozen competing family Rococo broken pediment churches, cathedrals, and uh, main street of Rococo terraced palaces and Vittorio fairly nearby, perhaps has even more going for it. You think I mean great pizza, don't you? For anyone with a first time, an apartment in a palazzo is affordable. Retaining all the stucco and fresco detailing on the ceilings and walls. Joinery. But I was looking down more of a secondary street for as many metres squared area as I could get for my pittance that I'd saved up that I could buy cash. I've got to slip it in somewhere. The main problem about Italy is that whether you're spending a lot of money or a little bit of money, the littlest bit of money commission that you have to pay to register the property in the first place just seems extortionate in proportion. This high. So you buy a property for one euro, but then you pay thousands to register it with the local government, national government. There is another way where you don't register your title and you just 
occupy. Pay all your bills and then prove some years later that it's yours. But then if it's your holiday home, what have you got if in the case of adverse possession? You're sort of only really doing a adverse possession yourself. Folks, the masters of coercive control, so many willing to bear false witness. The natural reserves make for great chilled, chilled swim pools. The waterfalls act like brilliant resistance pools. You never need to do a tumble turn. And there's a lot of kilometres of it. You can find your private little spot. Or oh, join the crowd, it's always good. Youths lounge with their lovers. Well, the only place they're not chaperoned. Big families and small houses. Have I mentioned Nero of Olo wine? I don't know what on earth I look like. I need a plastic bottle of red wine. So you park up and you walk to the ravine. So I know we're going to be there all day. So I can apply my formula. If I start drinking straight after parking, I've got the hike to keep hydrated for. I can drink the fresh water in the river any time. Might as well down. Stop drinking. Wait the number of hours of the number of units that you've had, plus one hour, and then you're good to drive home. Sweating out of your way back up. And pick up some seafood for dinner on the way home. There's a string of restaurants along the street of Clatsos. So everything comes to life in the evenings. Zombies in the heat of the day, in town, lumbering around and flaking them down. There is a big, open, high ceiling, high decor bar on the main piazza. Neon lights and uh, banging music again. It's not just that everything's done outside in the breeze. It's that, you know, like in, you see American films where some woman's sat alone in a hotel bar and some, they get picked up and they're presuming that they're a prostitute or something. A big central oval bar doesn't really convey that they're set up for food. I was inclined to stay in. We went for a place that was a family restaurant. It'd be impossible to find tucked away down a wide driveway if you haven't read on the internet. But it was a no house stew or a bolognese, just so it tastes so much better when all the marinade fully the day later. All the food, all the dishes that we had there had that sort of depth of flavour. It wasn't just there, but generally ingredients were excellent. Provenance, perhaps not polite to inquire, but you really got the impression it was like you know, their garden, their restaurant. So the criteria of going where the food suits my palate for the second home isn't a bad one. Right, I'll start the story now. We read the menu outside, like you do. Started salivating and went inside. A big open plan room with the largest round tables. A dozen of them that I'd ever seen. You could probably fit a dozen people round each of these tables. I like that they were all round tables, not an authoritarian head at each end. We were on the early side, hungry from our hike. We waited for a concierge-type waiter to turn up. Uh, immediately, I'm sure there was a tinkle of a bell somewhere in the background from the door. Uh, so we sort of helped ourselves to some water on the first big round table that we got to. Two people on a 12-seater table. It was a little bizarre. Waiter came over by the time we'd um, or decided what we liked on the menu. So we were able to order straight away. May as well stay sitting where we are. The food was amazing. Part way, they deserved the four and a half star rating or whatever it was that they had on the internet. Part way through, we'd had our starter, just started the main course. A young, very well dressed guy, all in black suit, of course, like men in black. Much the same as the young, suited and booted guy with the attractive rake of a girlfriend that had been stood with us while we were waiting to date our car parking token and pay after visiting the La Isla Bonita. Madonna playing the head all day long, beach, where you can walk at low tide to the Island. A little bit of fun. Expecting them to get into like a flash car and see that. That's why I didn't sort of let them go first. But as they pulled away, it was like a and really throaty sound, like half the fuel was going out through the exhaust pipe inefficiency of like a huge engine for a truck. This ugly shaped limo, limousine, like I'd never seen before. It looked like a Russian 1950s KGB limo. Did it need a truck engine? It can only be for the armor plating. This young guy was the next in line to the fortune. We needed protection from rival families. You might want me to have confirmed my suspicion um, with him and he'd have found it a fascinating conversation. No. He was suspicious even of momentary eye contact at the ticket machine for the car park. Why the second time that young guy dressed all in black? Is it the Sicilian uniform or is there a funeral on that day? A wake or weekend? The young guy was escorted with half a dozen much older... Not old, middle-aged, no. Gentlemen that were perhaps in the prime of their life, they'd spent a lot of it fighting and were not yet punch drunk. Stupid. But they certainly had learnt all the tricks that they all need in their lives. When I say fighting, it probably involved a lot of violence, but tools. These look like the bodyguards, but a fair number of them. 
I'm sure he'd been with his bodyguards a fair while. They all got on well enough, there was no boundaries there. They caught your attention, they made for unusual looking family at the family restaurant tables. Long, far distant from us, the big open area had obviously been an extension at one point and they were sort of sat in the old linear near the kitchens. Occasional raucous laughter emanating. It sounded like they'd already had a good laugh before they'd come to eat at the family restaurant. Family friends restaurant? Customers restaurant. When they came in, the, one of them that was particularly tall and particularly big in a muscular sense looked down at us. I vaguely tried to acknowledge them without making any direct eye contact at all. He was wearing the most awful clothes, really. It was like a sports jacket, it's like a checked thing from the 1970s, and uh, slacks, the trousers, I think they'd be called. All rather polyestery fabric. There was something of a rancid, stale smell about them, but the young guy obviously spelt, smelt of the latest. The meek waiter had, on delivery of one of our courses, sort of very politely apologised about the noise, which um, wasn't a problem. They seemed to be enjoying themselves. Part way through our meal, my five-foot female friend uh, went off to the toilet in the general direction of the linear bit of building. And the big fella in the 20 or 30 year time warp fashion went off to the t toilet a little while later. This was when they first became a problem. I see what the waiter was worrying about. She took quite a while to come back. They thought it hilarious that their group of men past their prime were taking it in turns to keep her inside the ladies while each of them drained their pecker in the gents. She'd been gone for a little while, both of you would usually think, um, so I politely asked the waiter if he could uh, make sure she's alright. Because the next course had just arrived, I didn't want to just leave all the food on the table and oh, the waiter had enough influence for that. She came back a bit irritated, <laughs> but the food more than made it. And she wasn't sure what had been going on in there. She was trying to describe the smell of the intimidation as she squeezed past the middle toilet cardboard. And seemed a little bit appeased with my the smell of sex, the smell of suicide, and all those things you can't keep inside. It seemed to like I didn't know what I had. So between us, all the evidence pointed to words, the law of salvation was the, well, at least one of them. Let's say the tall and big things. They'd just got a prison up to 20 or 30 years and then a little bit of group activity or something with their favourite ladies. Not the night for item on that. That offshoot of that kind of business. And they'd gone out to eat afterwards, yeah, wreaking some of the perks of their protection and building up their strength again before they get back to work for the next generation. We pitied them, of course. And it added a bit of local flavour to an authentic restaurant. I don't know what they were doing over at that table. They might have just been having drinks and a few little nibbles or something because we... See, shoving it down quite. Most likely, that's it. Bit of shoving it to They left, chuckling away to themselves as we were paying them fill to the waiter. Had to walk straight past the right by the door. We left at a reasonable time before we left, not going to form a pub crawl with them, really. When we left in the steep driveway, there was still the big fella and the smartly dressed man in black. His pops, Paul Bearers from the funeral, had uh, gone on elsewhere. M.I.B. was using a little bit of English, so it can only have been talking to me. I kept it brief and carried on walking, like my parents taught me to do if I was worried that they might be an abuser as a child. I whispered to my five-foot female friend, uh, just carry on walking and go back to the bed and breakfast, whatever happens. You're probably really the target of their attentions, tiresome as it is. But it wasn't really, it was all about one-upmanship over who they might think of as their closest rival. But if you can hurt their venerables, their children, that hurts them. So you can't be too careful, you? Brown narrowed between the back of the big guy um, towards me as I carried on walking, um, maintaining polite conversation as best I could with the younger guy, until the smell better described as a stench Natale, from 20 years inside in a Sicilian prison in man-made fibres got much too close. At which point he's pulling his flammable jacket aside to reveal something I'd never seen before. Quite a shiny metal polished snub nose 45 revolver with a wood handle, I'm gonna call it, tucked into his trousers, the well-dressed guy. The young fellow is saying, do you want to see it? I would have to be amongst the actionably insane. They were laughing all the while. Where'd you come from? Where are you staying? They were chatty. Well, as was I, in turn, being vague. I doubt it's one that you're affiliated with, sir. It's only a little place just off as you go down the hill. Yeah, I'm a teacher, I call everyone, so they were trying to see if I was wealthy, worth robbing. But this would have been no street robbery. After a long minute of this interaction across decades and 
middle of centuries, middle medieval times. Um, MIB made noises to his big villain friend in Italian to the effect of, ah, oh, let him go. Away from the big bugger of a bellend that he'd done his big shock and awe reveal of his concealed weapon. It was very easy to find my five-foot female friend. She'd gone public in the main piazza. The restaurant's only just really round the back of the town hall and they didn't go directly home in case we were being followed. But we went to bed earlier because we were leaving for the plane. Fair few hours drive to the airport, first thing in the morning, early flight. Of course I was, but I wasn't really concerned about my five foot three male friend. She's got a knack of squealing like a baby being put through something awful. Or I'd wilt the worst psychopath into a worm. Just if you were to ask her to dress in an outfit with an overly high percentage of man made bike. Yes, in. in the middle of the night, we were stirred from our slumbers, probably like nightclub checking out time in any decent sized town. Repeated determined banging on our window, quite specific. Just random passers by, a few taps with the palm of your hand on the windows. We were on the ground floor. It previously probably been a shop or a bar itself on the slightly on the road out of town, just past the main arch, current arch. Then our room had one of those Constantine doors that was permanently closed across the whole one side. The big walnut wardrobe, dark wood wardrobe, that could fit storage for two families the adjacent wall. I comforted with the of the oaks after they came out of the cab, but it persisted. You could tell that they'd come inside. Um, the host had been roused from his back room, kind of sort of sleeping area, and he was dealing with them. They were inside, and they were banging off the door of our room, like, until they sort of moved them on after the night. It seemed obvious to me that they were two of the just past their prime foot soldiers from the restaurant. And came to how many people on the side with nothing to do and I can cross it to find out where I was staying. A fair few hours later, sort of dawn, we left without any fuss, everything was quiet. We had already been packed before the commotion. Got in the hire car across the road and headed off down the hill, screaming behind us in the way that only a 50cc in the pub scooter with two people on it can. Two kids, really. Teenagers in weird shell suits, that's track suits, sportsmen. I not really trying to overtake. I was trying to pull alongside and attract attention on this winding road down here at town. I wasn't dawdling, I had to rent the shit out of the scooter. The one on the back, as I looked over in good road safety fashion to see what stupid thing I might be able to predict and doing next, lifted up the top half of his shelf suit to show a revolver, like, tucked in the elasticated waistband of his bottom half of his shelf suit. My eyes went back to the boat. There was a car. I could see, like, one or two of them's ahead coming up. I just lights on. I didn't really need the lights at this time. The scooter was, was still beeping. And they sort of kept alongside. I started to speed up, and they did equally. I speeded up more. It was perfectly good in a four-wheel. I knew that they couldn't overtake before the car that they hadn't seen, because they were so focused on me, came round the next corner. There was no way that I was going to let these kids with this gun get ahead of me. They could just make it dangerous and then we'd have to stop. The driver did see the oncoming car to slam on his brakes and the gun came flying out of the elasticated waistband of his mate on the back and I could see it back in the rear view mirror, side rear view mirror, bouncing on the road in a very sort of dull, flat, skiddy bounce. He obviously had the weight of a real thing. It wasn't any sort of toy gun at all. You could hear it. So from Notto to Vittoria, which is about an hour and a half, I drove as fast as the road would allow it. Hey, perhaps I'd be in a different criminal family's curtilage by then or something. Two lanes of traffic jam on a motorway exit for a town, and I'm tanking it at 90 mile an hour in the third lane. Long way off in the distance in my rearview mirror, I can see a light of a police car and start to hear a siren. Surreptitiously, in a bland coloured vehicle, I slip into the second lane, a little slot that opened up. The unmarked police car went past fairly slowly. And the 35-year-old guy driving did sort of look at me as he went past, but he wasn't sure it was me. It would have caused too much turmoil to... And I don't think he particularly wanted to do the bidding of artists that had sent him. I was going truly across country after that. The most direct route to the airport, but country lanes. That had sold the Mafia bent cop APB that they might have had out on me. Couldn't not do a driving roundy tour of towns and villages we went past and if they looked particularly promising. Exchanged the vehicle with the car hire on getting to the airport and waited in the queue to check in while waiting what looked like a very similar officer that hey they're all turning looking wanted to talk to me in the queue. 
straighten something out with him about who I've met while I've been on holiday. They might not have been a bent cop. It might have been the bed and breakfast bloke calling to say that I might have got involved with some dodgy locals and I might be up to something with them. But I answered all these questions much better than I had done the Matthew. Well, I dressed guys night before. An Italian plod seemed satisfied and went away with a be careful. We went through passport control at the earliest convenience. And relax. Some of you might be waiting for a cavity search story at the British end. <laughs> we call that Brexit. <laughs>